Welcome to 4th and 1, where I always got it done. Bringing facts by the tongue before the rising of the sun. But this ain't me in a shotgun. This is me. Golly. This is me <laughs> fucking shit up, having a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Damn. You have to get that fixed. Here we go, viral moment of the week. First down, let's get into it. Leap right over, doesn't touch anybody, perfectly legal, gets his hands up and makes a play. That just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make, some things in life make sense, that is not one of them, I tell you that for sure. Miles Garrett, this is a individual who is touched by the cloth of Zeus. Blocking the field goal kick, exceptional, but that's not the point that's more that that's most impressive for the viewer to understand how impressive this is if he touches the center it's a penalty mm -hmm. they cannot be touched they're in a compromised position meaning they're snapping the ball and their head is tucked so no player as you will see a lot of uh, special team players as you would see the the format of formation you see, if this were if this was a center, you're gonna see a lot of people over here, a lot of people over there, but nobody is going to be on top of the center. But this right here is something that it's more impressive because if he graces it, graces the center on his back and the center flops, that's a personal foul. See what I'm saying? Which makes it even more of like that guy right there. Fuck out of his damn way, cause I ain't stopping him. So you ain't doing the Oklahoma drill with Miles. Why would I do that? That's a death sentence. What the fuck? What is he? Six five, six six, and we seen the clip of him like playing basketball. He's not supposed to move like that at that size. Basically, that's all I'm just trying to say. This guy jumped over somebody that if he touches, it's a personal foul. He didn't touch them. And on top of that, he blocked the field goal. We see the clip of Deshaun Watson because Deshaun Watson is like, bro, people ain't supposed to be able to do that. And he's literally taking over this game. Here we go. Next clip. Not the as a hit stick. Okay, I don't feel sorry for buddy because when you jump on that field, you got to be ready to face whatever is trying to deface you. All right, uh, the tackle, whom that's just somebody doing his job. What I don't like, rewind that. Okay, we all we all got that that buddy blue shirt. You ain't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, it's one of them situations where we all got that friend that like, bro, yeah, hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Stay your head down. Good hit, bro. Like, yeah. 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 Like, to lean over and a curse out. Come on, bro. You bet not. Like, <laughs> now, now, we already identified, let's use the color analogies. <laughs> Yellow did his job. White. <laughs> We don't feel sorry for you because you knew what you was getting yourself into. Now, let's rewind this clip from the jump and let's look at Blue. Come on, Blue. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Okay, bro, you were you was already late to the party. You see what I'm saying? Like when you finally got there, the damage was done. And then the walk off, give me the walk off one well, more why time. Why was he doing a zigzag run across? Look at Blue. Like, yes. Like, who is shaking you from 20 yes. years now? Yes, 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 bro. Yes. My, my issue is, yeah, motherfucker, take care of that little bit for me. Yeah. But did you see the last yellow run up though? Mm -mm. He tarted to the party. Right about now. What you doing, bro? It's over with your butt bag. <sighs> with your butt bag, what you doing? And this is how I know. The the dude who tackled him don't fuck with everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Blue. <laughs> we got questions bit, bro. It's more blue people in the world than you know we get credit for, but at the end of the day, we're gonna leave it at that. Ready? Here we go. Second down, questionable call of the week. Let's check it out. Oh, 
Somebody help. I got bad knees. I can't watch shit like this. Bro, listen. <laughs> this is a question to the viewer. You really think God has something to do with that? Then somebody gonna say, that's just instant karma. Well, first off, I wouldn't call that karma. I would call that the inability to properly walk down steps. My boy told everything, MCL, PCL, meniscus, kneecap, it ain't nothing now. <laughs> it's bone on bone. <laughs> but my God that I serve, he ain't do that. Call it what you want, I don't know. Like, <laughs> boom, <laughs> shit. The backbreaker. The backbreaker. <laughs> You done jumped all the marbles out of I really would like, look, one thing that, that, that maturity has taught me to <laughs> is this. Be careful how you talk to people and how you handle people. Because the same people that you talk down on may be the same person that can help you. Whether you want to call it uh, uh, karma or whatever, he going to have to humble himself to ask for help. Because the person... That he gonna say, fuck you. Ba -da -da -da. Beep, beep, yeah, rah. Bo, bo, bo. Uh, uh, ah. Uh. What you think this feeling gonna look like? Help me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's some shit that I just said, but help me, bro. <laughs> he was already asked for help right here. Ooh. That first drop. Goddamn. That hurt. Ooh. Oh, shit. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> help him, y'all. Matter of fact, next time walking down steps, I would uh, advise you to wear like knee braces or knee sleeves. Lamar Odom edition or like Magic Johnson edition. He need the magics. Yeah. Them, uh, them uh, Brett Favre, uh, <laughs> copper, copper shit, copper, copper, copper fits. <laughs> them motherfuckers. <laughs> but we live and we learn. We gotta be more better than that. Brother. Here we go. Getting into third down. Cam, or as I would like to say it, Boogie approved. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hi, friends. Yeah. South. Can you, can you take a seat? South. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had a play called. Bro, listen, bro. This this me, this me on my uh, soldier blaster. I was the first one in the lead to wear the bambushka. That's facts. We got receipts. Come on, bro. And when I wore it, folks was like, oh, bro, what the hell can got on his head? Uh, yo. With the little peeking of uh, the melanin-infused uh, hair. Yeah. Boom. They were just sprouting in. You did. And where you get the bambushka from? Man, who cares? Because they ain't paid me to wear the motherfucker. I put them on. You ask me. Yeah, like that sauce right there, sir. Okay. <laughs> you feel me? It's been a lot of guys that that done did the bambushka and they did it the right way. You feel me? They did it their way. That's most important. And that's coming from a person who stands on being uniquely you and owning it. That right there is boogie approved. Fourth down, wholesome moment of the week, or as I would like to call it, the One Love Award. All right, so uh, we got Tyler... Bagant had uh, 53 family members in attendance to his first start. Fourth Division II quarterback in the Division past 20 years to start to a start. game. How many was he? 20 years ago was the last Division II quarterback to start a game. To start? Okay. All right, let's see the video. Wasn't easy. There's a whole mm. section. Family, friends, his lady. That's all his people? As he said to us the other day. When we Wasn't easy. There's a whole section. Family, friends, his lady, as he as he said to us the other day when we were talking, he bought 53 tickets and all. This is the first thing you asked him when we sat down with him. He said, and he, before you even finish the question, it was 50. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> he looked like Nick Foles right there, though. Or Blaine Gabbert. Blaine, I'm giving a slim Blaine Gabbert. The amount of love that you was inundated with is something that every athlete dream at some particular point whether it happens at the stadium or 
at home following a game that you want. Like, that's that's the wholesome part. That's why you do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're able to have residual income or residual compensation from something that you put so much into, right, it's rewarding. And Tyler, this, my friend, is something that is extremely wholesome. The other and then, night, um, and we, we dad is a 28-time world champion arm, arm wrestler. Just to see if I can take oh, his dad looked like he don't fuck around. No doubt. And I honestly expected you guys to do this on Monday. I can't believe what took you guys so long. <laughs> hey, talking about. Let's find out here. I, I know very little oh about arm God. wrestling. I know Brian's going to hold the mic don't here. Don't do it. Don't do it. Perfect. So we're going to have to put my hand to the side. I'll leave my hand here to the side. It's real easy. If your hand hits that pad, you are the great, you are the baddest dude in the history of the NFL Network. What usually happens is I win. What's best for you is don't fight it. Right? Everybody's good. At Not the subtle of flex. I mean, right? Hold on. Rewind that. Pops. Hey. Pops. Pops. Yeah. Don't, bro. It's so much subtle jabs that's happening right now that he don't even know. It's just like boom, 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 boom. Like what's happening? He's shitting on me right now and on live TV. But at the end of the day. What can you do? Let's see what happens. Ready and go. Nice. Relax there, young man. I thought for sure you'd be a lot stronger. I'll take it from here. Listen, the rest of these people, they've been calling me Travis. You can call me daddy, young man. Yes, oh, sir. Wow. Thanks a lot to the NFL. Pops, He's actually a lot stronger. You can call me daddy, young man. There it is, guys. Damn, I like Pops, man. Sign Pop, man. Tyler, I thought you was cool, but Pops, you get the one love award of the week, man. Real talk. Yeah, I like that. I like that guy. Yo, what's good? What's popping? Yo, for this segment of Newton's Law, man, we have a special guest. You dig? By way of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, but from, you know what I'm saying, Atlanta, Georgia. C1 in alum. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, my boy went and got that bag this year, you know what I'm saying, with the Las Vegas Raiders. I present to some and introduce the others, Jacoby Bartholomew. <laughs> <laughs> Jacoby Myers, boy, what's good with it? Hey, what's going on, bro? Appreciate you having me for sure, bro. <laughs> Man, listen, first off, let's, let's, let's bring the people back, right? Yeah. And when I always say my impact, was far beyond than what people seen on a football field. How did we first meet? Dog, uh, man, I could. Man, if I, it's crazy, bro. I still got the picture on my phone. Like, I showed up to one of the camps, bro. And I remember back then, everybody like, oh, that's Cam, bro. That's Cam, bro. People, yeah. A lot of people don't realize that, like, they just see you being goofy and eccentric and stuff, whatever it is, bro. But for us back in Georgia, bro, mm -hmm. We was like, but that's Cam, but that's Superman Cam. So mm -hmm. showed up to one of the camps, bro. You know what I'm saying? I remember my pops was just like, "Look, bro, you got to get a picture, dog. You, yeah. you got to get a picture." Bro, I'm like, "Man, for sure, bro. That's bro, I'm getting a picture, bro." So we pop up, get a picture. I remember you was on crutches because you had hurt yourself then, your ankle yeah. or something. I'm just like, "Man, this Cam, I'm getting this picture." So from there, it just rolled off, man. I was trying to make the team. You for sure ain't play me. I ain't never forget that. Took me on a trip, though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Took me on a trip, though. Had a good time, bro. You just you just showed somebody from Georgia, bro, just a whole different experience with the football thing, yeah. bro. So I always I always got a special place in my heart for sure, bro. Yeah. I appreciate that. Man, backstory with me and Jacoby, bro. So Jacoby originally played quarterback, right? And yeah. when you was, what, 15, 16? Had I just remember. Like, like 15, 16 for sure. Bro. My dad kept saying, but put Jacoby in, put Jacoby in. And I was like, bro, this dude got an arm, bro. He could throw it from here to Africa. But, bro, he could not throw a slant, but he was going to be sizzling. <laughs> so, you feel hey. me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, for me, being from Atlanta, it, it was never just about me. It was always about empowering kids who came from my situation and now seeing – you get the deal that you just did before the season and you coming into your own. Now, when you come back, folks going to be like, well, that's Jacoby Myers, bro. Like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, what? So that's what it's, right. you know, really all about, you know, for me being in this position. So when the folks be like, bro, are you a hall of fame player? Man, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I give a fuck about, you know, really using my influence in a positive way to impact guys, 
you know, like yourself. And we had the opportunity to play with each other in New England. And I think the thing that I remember most about me and you, bro, I think I was just coming off the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. And we was in a bubble, right? So backstory about the bubble. New England has a indoor turf facility that is mm -hmm. rarely used. And anybody who knows uh, uh, New England, Massachusetts, right? Mm -hmm. That place gets extremely cold. So Bill Belichick has this kind of mind triggering thing that's like, bruh, you're going to be mentally tough. The only reason why we was using the bubble was for a locker room to stay spaced out, right? right? And I remember this particular time where I came back, you was there, and anybody who knows Jacob, he real like, you know, smooth, he ain't gonna talk, he gonna go do his work and leave, you know what I'm saying? Typical so, receiver, but typical person that's just like, I'm here to do my work, bro, and I'm gone. And I had a conversation with you at the locker, I'm like, bro, like, like why don't, like, you fire. You feel me? Like, in New England, you're going to compete in practice. Every day you have practice, there's going to be a period that's designated or periods that's dedicated to one-on-one -on -one competing, competition, right? And I just remember, bro, we had uh, uh, Stefan Gilmore and, boom, Jacoby going up with him. And, ba bam, he, he wasn't blinking. Like, he was producing. And I'm like, bro, like, why are you not standing on a table you like getting reps, you know what I'm saying? Because they wasn't even dressing you. You was traveling, but you wasn't dressing. Not even dressing. For sure. And then that following week, we played the Jets and shit. The rest, I mean, your birthday and the rest was pretty much history. But the world was seeing. I'm not gonna sit up here and say what I was seeing because you was balling out from a rookie with you and uh Stiddy, uh, you know, having that connection. But just that belief in yourself. That's what I stand on. You know what I'm saying? And it's not necessarily cocky if you can back it up. That was really your coming out party. You feel me? Not for real, bro. Not for <laughs> real. It's crazy you and tell that from... story. No, I ain't going to lie, bro, because you don't even know. Like, I remember that exact situation you're talking about, bro. Like, mm -hmm. that low-key saved my career, bro. I don't even mm -hmm. think you know, like, how serious that was for me, bro, because that was at a point, right? Like you said, bro, I'm not even dressing. I'm like, no, yeah. bro, this ain't for me. Like, this ain't for me. This league stuff ain't for me. I'll go figure it out. So just yeah. that talk, bro, I remember sitting there, bro, in that chair, that talk, but it was perfect timing, bro. I always, yeah. I always appreciate you for that, for sure. And what you that just signed really... for, for the for the folks that, that just heard you say you was about to quit, what you just signed for, I forgot. For 10, bro, like 10, I don't even, 33, something like that, bro. 33, bro, I was like, <laughs> man, what, bro? What my career could have been, bro? Had we not, bro? I think back to that job all the time, bro. It's, a nigga would have been asked out, bro, asked out. Like, but it ain't like crazy. you, like you ain't like one of these guys that just get a deal. Like, bro, Jacoby been putting a body of work together, you know, for yeah. years on time. And this is what your fifth year? Yeah. You feel me? And yes. it's been subtle yeah. plays that at one point I came, I came to New England be, in large part for Julian. You know, I'm like, I got a veteran receiver that we can work. This is the year after Brady left. So Brady took Gronkowski and all this and that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, damn, at least I got Jules. Boom. Jules is hurt. <laughs> like he on the backside. Right. He, he was more hurt than what he was given credit for. Cause that's just who Julian Edelman is. Right. And then so all of a dude, sudden sure. I, I see a guy who is just deflated mentally that now at some particular points of the game, I'm like, Hey, Kobe, Hey, come on. Woo, hey. And just throwing that <laughs> bitch and he was making a play for a motherfucker. So, hell yeah. Just to see, here, dog. just to see everything that kind of happened and everybody always asks me like, yo, bro, like, what do you think about New England? My biggest regret from New England, and I always say it, is the fact that I didn't play in front of the fans. Because me being me, I feed off of the energy of, the, of, of, of people. Whether it's yeah. a boo, whether it's a ooh, whether it's a ah or a nah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I feed off For that sure. and I use that. And when we was in them doggone stadiums and it was empty, <laughs> they was pumping crowd noise. I'm like, man, this shit weak as a bitch, man. But man, you could hear the other sideline and shit. That shit was crazy. Yeah, 
That's yeah. Crazy. So so one thing that I want to talk about, man, just your overall growth and and the state of Vegas right now, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? When I see y'all roster from top to bottom, obviously, uh, you know, Devontae Adams, yourself, Jimmy G, uh, a solid, as we would see on paper, a mm. solid ass defense, you know what I'm saying? Special teams, and even with Josh McDaniels being a beautiful offensive mind. What does the Las Vegas Raiders need to do to get out of this funk? Keep going. You know what I'm saying? I think if we just show up every day, every day, we got everything we need. Like, it ain't nobody who's going to come in and just make us a better team like that. You know what I mean? I think if everybody just kept going, learn from the losses, we'll be all right. Man, my question, man, before we get out of here is this, bro. Like a person with your career, right? Have how you've been able to maneuver and, and having the mental stamina, New England term, <laughs> the mental stamina <laughs> to just keep doing and keep pushing. Because everybody don't necessarily get the big deal. Everybody don't everybody comes in as a free agent like yourself and just gotta work yeah. and hammer and, and 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 just hope to get saw by a coach or get favor from a coordinator, you know what I'm saying? That's going to stand on the table for you. What was that like for you, you know, being in this type of position in your career now? Man, it was, I ain't gonna lie. It was life changing, man. Cause you know me, you know how I am. Like I, I wear the same clothes if I have yeah. to, you know what I mean? The same sweats every day. If I have to, like, it was just in my eyes, I was doing it for my family. So whenever I made money, that dollar had to be split between me and my folks. You know what I mean? So just making it to where I am now, like I done finally got a chance to just breathe and play for myself a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like finally see what I could be, how good I could be on the field instead of just, all right, my family, we need this. So you got to go out there and take these hits, go out here and block this dude. So I ain't going to lie, man, it gave me a whole new aspect on football. Like I get to enjoy it a little bit more get to try to be a better teammate, try to be a better person, be more involved in it. So, I mean, I'm just grateful for real, man. Grateful for people like you who done helped me get here. Yep. It's just it's a dream come true for sure. Jacoby Bartholomew Myers, <laughs> before you get up out of here, bro. <laughs> when you signed your deal, yeah, yeah, yeah. what did you do? Dang, I'm finna sound real lame, bro, but I ain't do nothing. <laughs> I still ain't do nothing, bro. I'm so low-key with it, bro. I just, I ain't do anything. Where were you? Were you in Atlanta? I was working out, bro. I was, hell yeah. I was at uh, DSA working out. They called me. I'm like, dang, that's crazy. All right, let me get back to this workout. <laughs> oh, God. What you get? Oh, it. God. What you get yourself, bro? Cause it's a lot of people that's living vicariously through you right now. That'd be like, bro, like, first off, what hit the account, right? I know I'm dabbling <laughs> to, you know, personal. What hit the account, and what did you yeah, do? Yeah. You feel me with that? Like, not yeah, yeah. that point, but something that you said. Okay, cool. I'm gonna get me there. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. If it was one thing I did do, it's this crib, man, in Vegas. I got me a spot out in Vegas, bro. You know how. I was living in Foxborough, boy. I had the little hut. <laughs> I had the hut. So now I got, I I got a little uh, breathing room out here in Vegas. I'm enjoying it for sure. Boy, I'm staying with you for a uh, Super Bowl, boy. Like real talk. Up, man. You, you did. You know it's going to be a my, good time for sure. <laughs> my boy had a little hut where he just was playing 2K <laughs> all day and Call of Duty all day, <laughs> bro. Yeah. Come on, War is on it up, bro. But, man, bro, appreciate you, you, dog. Thank you, bro. And I'll be in contact with you. I already know it, bro. Hit me if you need me, bro. Appreciate you, dog. Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. Cam's picks. Ah, week seven's record was one and two. Mm. I took the Bills to beat the Patriots. It didn't go down like that. But what I did see, number one, Bill Belichick smile. That's always a good thing. All right. And for the first time this year, I really saw emotions out of Mac Jones. That competitiveness, he was making big time throws, playing with confidence, even in murky, dirty pockets, he was still making plays like Mac Jones can, right? And with that being said, the Patriots won. Now, Eagles 
versus the Dolphins. I took the Eagles. So that puts me at one and one right now. What I saw from the Eagles is this. They are a cheat code and nobody's talking about the dominant season A.J. Brown is having. The guy is, I think, one of very few players to have five straight games of 125 yards through that whole span and counting, right? Something that is noteworthy, MVP-esque, right? Because not all the catches that he's making, bro, is like layup catches. I've seen him catch contested catch after contested catch after wild catch after wild catch. Not only to mention, A.J. has support, not just with Devontae Smith, but one of my all-time favorite players, Julio Jones. And he was on that field looking like uh, the modern-day version of Jerry Rice. Now, when he get going, Jalen ain't going to have no reason not to have weapons. When you got big play Slay doing what he's doing in that stingy-ass defense, that's it, man. I don't see a team consistently beating the Eagles outside of the Eagles beating themselves. Mm, that's facts. Uh, lastly, I went with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the Falcons. That didn't happen, so that makes my overall week record of week seven one and two. So leaves my overall record at 10 and eight. And let's get into this week's picks, okay? Bengals at 49ers. I'm gonna go with the Bengals here, all right? And the reason why I'm gonna go with the Bengals is because we've seen a lot of insufficiencies on Monday night with the 49ers, even though we all know that big Trent Williams, OG, triple OG, is coming back. But when you got a fresh team going against a team that is shown some holes in a armory, I'm going to go with that. This league is all about preparation. This league is all about trying to find an edge. And I think a fresh Cincinnati Bengals team coming off of their bye week beats the 49ers at or in San Francisco. Okay, my pick number two goes with Seattle Seahawks. Mm. The Browns at uh, Seattle. I'm picking Seattle to be three and a half point favorites or three and a half point underdogs, right? In this particular situation. Uh, this past week, we've seen the Browns struggle. A lot of help from the referees. But needless to say, needless to say, we all know the Pete Carroll Seattle uh, um, kind of M.O., very scrappy, very gritty, get the job done. It may not look pretty, but we'll take the dub. I see that being the case this week. That's why I'm going with Seattle Seahawks over the Browns. All right. Last but not least, my pick three has to go with the juggernaut. Eagles at the Commanders. Mm. Even though that is a divisional game, I do not see Washington stopping the juggernauts, the juggernauts of Philadelphia, all right? So we all, I mean, it's something that is worth mentioning, even though, you know, they are going into a hostile environment in PG County. But, you know, what we've been seeing over the last couple of weeks post the loss um, for the Jets, I don't see Washington Stopping the brotherly shove or the firepower that Philadelphia has. So I'm going with the Bengals over the 49ers. I'm going with Seattle over the Browns. And I am going with the Eagles over the Commanders. Let's see how that works out for your boy. And that is the conclusion of this week's show of Fourth and One. Catch me each and every week, each and every Wednesday, exclusively on my YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment your thoughts about this week's show. One finger, one pinky, one thumb. Your boy's out. One love. Get it!